Peripheral arterial disease, or PAD, is what I will discuss in this video. And essentially, you can think of it as angina of the extremities, just like how somebody would have angina uh, chest pain because of atherosclerosis of the coronary arteries. Peripheral arterial disease involves atherosclerosis of the lower extremities. And this causes ischemia, and the ischemia eventually leads to pain. Now I wanted to talk uh, about the etiology. Etiology of peripheral arterial disease is essentially the same etiology for coronary artery disease. And those things include increased age, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, high cholesterol levels, smoking, positive family history for this type of a condition, and obesity as well. So the same reasons why somebody would have coronary artery disease, same reason why someone would have peripheral arterial disease. So now let's talk about the symptomatology. Essentially what you get is this intermittent claudication. And this is basically saying that it comes and goes. And this term claudication is referring to the pain. It's often described as an ache or a cramp and most commonly it's felt in the calf. Although it can also be in the feet or in the thigh or in the buttocks. And this happens most commonly when the person is exercising. So during walking, for example. And this is the hallmark that you have this exercise induced reversible ischemia. So when the person stops, the pain goes away. In addition to the symptoms, there's other things that you can notice before you do any diagnostic testing. On physical exam, you can definitely palpate for diminished pulses. And the pulses may be diminished or in severe cases even be absent. And you can palpate the popliteal area or the dorsalis pedis pulse uh, to feel for diminished pulses which is a sign of impaired blood circulation. The legs or the feet because of poor blood circulation may also feel cool and something that can also happen in severe cases of peripheral arterial disease is the development of ulcers. Diagnosis. Well by far the most common test or most important one is something known as an ankyl brachial index and I'll describe what this is basically what you do is you measure the blood pressure in the arm and in the ankle and then you take a ratio of the systolic numbers in the ankle over the ratio of the systolic blood pressure in the arm and if this number is less than 0 0.9, then that is positive for peripheral arterial disease. And they have categories. They say mild is 0 0.71 to 0 0.9. Moderate peripheral arterial disease is 0 0.41 to 0 0.7. And severe peripheral arterial disease is less than 0 0.4. There is another test that is done that is also very uh, good to detect um, circulation abnormalities and that's a Doppler ultrasound that's very commonly done as well. Treatment well there's a multi-step uh, treatment uh, really involved the first thing is try to help modify the risk factors such as stopping smoking uh, controlling the conditions that are contributing such as high blood pressure diabetes, high cholesterol. The next is exercise. That will definitely help improve the circulation and that's very good advice to give a person if if they can exercise. Next is medications and there's basically two types. There's antiplatelet medications and these are very commonly used such as aspirin or Plavix, which uh, the generic name is Clopidogrel. 
And then there's specific medications that are for claudication relief. And of those, the best one is silostazol, very commonly used. So remember that. And if it is very severe peripheral arterial disease, then you have to go in and either place a stent or do some sort of surgical procedure to help the situation. Clinical vignettes now. 73 year old woman comes to the office because of crampy leg pain experienced over the past six months while walking her dog. The pain is only present during exertion and is relieved at rest. She had stable angina for the past 20 years. She smokes one and a half packs of cigarettes a day. She does not take any meds. Blood pressure is 130 over 90, pulse is 75. Physical exam shows diminished femoral pulse on the right leg compared to the left. Absent popliteal and pedal pulses on the right leg. There's no hair below the knee on the right leg. Skin is shiny and smooth. Toenails are thickened. Neurologic exam is unremarkable. The ankle to brachial artery pressure ratio is 0 0.7. A Doppler device so it shows decreased blood flow to the right leg. You should. Well, this is a classic clinical vignette talking about peripheral arterial disease. Very first thing I would do is modify her risk factors. So smoking, definitely, and I would ask her to start exercising. So choice A. Next one. 59-year-old man works as an accountant in a high-rise building. For many years, he habitually descended the 26 stories to the street at 10.30 noon and 2.30 to smoke a cigarette and take a walk that lasted about half an hour. He figures walking is good for his health. However, starting a month ago, he started to gain pains in his calf that made walking difficult. These pains have become progressively worse, limiting his walks to just a few minutes before he had to find a place to sit and rest. He also found it hard to climb stairs at home to go to bed. Sometimes he only managed three or four steps before he obliged to sit and rest. Worried, he consulted a physician who examined him and arrived at a tentative diagnosis. Which of the following choices best describes the first test the physician most likely performed to verify this diagnosis? Well, most likely has peripheral arterial disease, and the very best test to do is an ankle to brachial index, and that would be choice D. And the number should be less than 0.9 to make a diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease. And finally, 55-year-old man with mild to moderate hypertension, 35-year pack uh, smoker, diagnosed with peripheral vascular disease of the lower extremities, complaining of deep aching pain of the calves during walking. On exam, although the pedal and posterior tibial pulses are not palpable, the skin overlying the feet is reasonably well nourished. After various vascular studies, the vascular surgeon was consulted and she felt that there was no solid indication for a surgical procedure. The patient and his family physician agree that the patient will make definite changes in his lifestyle, most significantly will stop smoking. Which of the following would be the best pharma Suitable choice for medical management of the patient's claudication of the legs. Claudication relief is a big part of treatment of peripheral arterial disease, and the very best medication for that is silostazol, which would be choice A.